Hey y'all, hope y'all having a great Sunday. As y'all can see, I have my raw Indian hair back in. It's looking amazing. Um, So let me tell y'all, and I know some of y'all gonna be like, girl, oh my God, because I just had a little interaction with this lady at the store and she was like, oh, so I already know. So I'm gonna just tell y'all, when I was in high school, I always said one of my dreams or one of my goals was to open a salon. And on, it would be like um, one of the doors would be a salon, but then the, the store right next to it would be my beauty supply. And it would be a salon and a beauty supply. And um, I'm like, really, y'all notice I bring up the beauty supply thing from time to time. Because it's, it's an important issue. The beauty supply issue is a political issue. And it's unfortunate that like my generation, once upon a time, you know, the beauty supply, the beauty supply issue is a political issue, number one. Number two, I feel like my generation, which I'm Gen X, I mean, excuse me, I'm, I'm Gen Z. So you have Gen X, Millennials, Gen Z, and now Generation Alpha, I think. Like, I feel like all of us, for the most part, maybe Gen X, my mom's generation, like, they know. But I feel like the rest of us don't know. But you can go to YouTube and do your due diligence and you can actually take the time to learn how the beauty supply industry was monopolized by Koreans. And there was actual law and policy created to keep black people from owning the products that we consume or, you know, actually being able to open the stores and things like that. Even to this day, like anybody who has tried to open a beauty supply um, that is a, a black American or black, even Africans, can tell you firsthand how hard it is right so an example is when a black beauty supply is open able to open and you go and you notice the prices are a little higher and you because you just gotta save your two dollars so bad you go back to the koreans that was done on purpose that's how they monopolize the beauty supply industry so me personally three years ago i decided i was no longer going to go because i was tired of going in and nobody speaking i'm tired of going in there and you don't hire black people or if you do hire a black person you know what i notice now is they'll try to make it seem familiar by hiring uh like latinos but then they'll they won't hire black people or the black people got like they can't be cashiers and stuff like these are things i noticed so i intentionally go out of my way not to support Korean businesses, period, especially when it pertains to the beauty supply industry. And I don't feel no shame in saying it. I know when it comes to the West Coast, people get squirmy around those topics. Also, when I was younger, I used to work in um, some beauty supply stores that were Korean owned. And um, I remember like this was when my hair business, like I was just really getting started. I probably was doing hair for like three years. And um, I had started making wigs. And I remember, um, like, the lady I worked for, she did not want me or black hairstylists, like, getting customers out the beauty supply. She was like, no, I'm going to put a salon, I'm going to put a thing back here. So, like, it's crazy. So, y'all can make money off us, but we can't make money off of what you've created off of us. So, me personally, I don't do it. I don't like the disrespect. You know, nowadays, I feel like they, they're a little bit more... You know, they act better like they put in Black Lives Matter signs at the window so they'll get looted and stuff. But I don't care. It's still the same. Right. So what I'll usually do, what I'll usually do is um, I mostly shop at professional hair stores anyway, uh, just because the pricing is better for stylists and um, they carry more like salon oriented products, quality products. But when I do need like those more niche products that we need. Um, I'll try to, I'll go to Sally's because at the end of the day, a lot of people think, oh, Sally's is a black, I mean, Sally's is a white store or whatever, but Sally's hires black people. Sally's carries, you know, black owned brands. Like a lot of the brands you be thinking are black owned, they're not black owned. They're Korean owned or they're other owned, you know? So said that to say, I was on Instagram a little while ago and, uh, that's why I said, I know people gonna get tired of me. I don't really care. I was, um way is fast i'm gonna go this way i was on instagram a little while ago and i see some um people that i follow here i seen y'all um 
somebody I follow like did a photo shoot for this beauty supply store here, Lux Beauty Supply, right? And so I seen it was like all big and stuff. I had been seeing it, but I never been before. So I commented because I was like, okay, maybe I'll check it out. And I'm like, um, I asked them like, is it black? Oh, in the comments they gonna say yes, but then somebody else clocked in and was like, no, they're not. Um, and then somebody else was like, oh, well, one of the owners is black. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay, so no. No, it's not black owned. <laughs> so I went to Sally's to get some rollers, right? Because I'm back on my roller setting. Y'all know I'm big into the rollers. And I need, I, before I left Vegas, like, I gave all my rollers away. And um, I left the rest of my rollers in Atlanta. So um, Sally's didn't have the size that I wanted. And my client that I'm doing today, she has longer hair. So I wanted to um, make sure that I had the rollers that I wanted to use on her hair. So, um, I called the hair just to make sure they had it because, like I said, Sally's didn't have what I wanted. And, um, I came over and I'm like, this is not black. Oh, like they really, <laughs> it's Koreans all outside. They doing a little wig sale. The front cashiers, Latino, it's some black women that work in there, like doing the field work. But the overseers is like, no, absolutely not. It's not a black on store. And I asked one of the girls, I said, I asked her just to confirm. And she was like, no, it was a black girl. Like West Coast black people is, is a different breed, right? Because they almost get offended that you want to support black businesses. Like I'm not saying everybody, but I'm saying it's like people look at you crazy. And like coming from like living in a place like Atlanta, it's just, a, it's just a, you know, a different vibe. But, um, she almost was like offended that I asked. But it's like, I'm offended that y'all sat here and lied. I already knew they was lying. Cause when I had asked that and the girl said no in the comments and somebody's like, oh, one of the owners. Like when I just asked the girl, she was like, oh, well one of the owner's wife is black. It's not black owned. What the hell? Like, no, like it, it's one thing. There's an organization called Bob's though, right? And they help black people open up beauty supplies. But, like, it's one thing if you have a, you, you work with a Korean to help you, like, you know, as the friend so they can get the products for you. And that's the way they partner with you. But it's still a Korean-owned beauty supply. It's still not the same. And it's, like, it's ridiculous to me how, I can't say it's ridiculous because I used to be confused about this, too. Like, I didn't think it mattered. But the more I learn about history and, like, policy and economics, like, absolutely not. Where do you see, are you ever going to see a black taco stand and Hispanics coming to buy tacos from black people? That would make no sense. Like, people complain all the time about not being able to find work or discrimination. Y'all just seen, and black people get amnesia so quick. Like, they'll throw some discounts and you're going to be right back at the store buying it. Black women in particular are very weak when it comes to being able to hold out on not buying hair and stuff like that. It's like, it amazes me. It's like crack or something. We just seen on TikTok, the girl was going off about the, I never heard of this brand, but apparently it's popular. This brand all the girls be using and, and she was working at the corporate office. They hired the one black girl and the Koreans was owning it or Jewish or something. They was racist. You know, it's like, where was I? I forgot what I was going to say. Um, damn. I forgot what I was saying. Hold on. Let me regather my thoughts. All right, like you complain about being having racist encounters at work, you know, all this different stuff. People won't hire you, but then the things that we consume and we spend hella money on that we we should be monopolizing for ourselves. Every other culture, anything that they have unique to them, I'm gonna go back to tacos because everybody loves tacos, and other people try to do it, but at the end of the day, most people is going to go to taco creators to get their tacos. Black people, the only people you will see who will give away, like even with this white girl braiding on Instagram and y'all want to pay her $700, even though she don't wash hair, but let a black hairstylist don't wash hair, y'all going to drag the black hairstylist for filth. Like, I can't do it. At the end of the day, I brought this up to say, like, I am going to fulfill my childhood dream of opening a beauty supply. Mine is going to be different, though. I don't need to carry them hair products. I'm going to have all black owned brands, period. And whatever else, I'll manufacture and create it myself. Like, and it amazes me, because, like, when you say stuff like this, like, the girl in the store, the black lady, you know, it's almost like she was looking at me like I was racist for asking that. That's not how racism works, boo. What's racist is 
why are black people who try to get into the industry that they are the largest consumers of can't get in that's racism people be trying to pull the reverse racism card like i used to do that too i didn't know i didn't understand that's why i'm like i need to maybe go on my youtube and the research that i've done and how i've been able to like compile this information to gain understanding maybe i need to put it out there so our generation understands like it's not like no absolutely not black people have to do better black women especially the biggest consumers and the most influential black american women y'all need to do better you need to be better stewards of your dollars if you go to a black owned business the customer service ain't right tell them if you don't get it together i ain't coming back make them do better black people will give non-black people a bazillion chances to mistreat you be rude anti-blackness all of that but as soon as a black person does. Oh, she was my stylist was late. She hit me with the hey boo. Tell her. And if she don't get it right, it's a bazillion other black hairstyles. Like that's what gets me. It's a bazillion black people that could braid, but it's one white girl who come on Instagram and learn how to braid. Y'all worship her like she's Jesus. Like it's pathetic. Like we ain't seen black girls know how to braid before. You complain when a black girl want to raise her prices, but oh, let me play the white girl seven hundred dollars. Like y'all look goofy. Period. And if you offended, please unfollow because I don't want people like that on my page. That's insane to me. I got to get this together. Like, and if somebody want to partner with me, y'all been thinking about it too. We could do it. We could all, you know what I'm saying? But something has to be done. Something has to be done because it's not right. As a PSA, if you're somebody who is a conscious consumer and that's something you value, Lux Beauty Supply in Vegas is not black owned. Okay? Having a black wife does not equal black owned. It's not a black owned beauty supply. If that's something you care about. There are black beauty supplies online. And regardless, because some things, I sometimes see people say, oh, well, the products came from China. It's still a black person that's a It's a game. <laughs> it looks amazing.